Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and we began yesterday talking about the laws of prosperity. And I told you something yesterday. I said, listen, settle it in your heart first of all. If you are having, if you're not prospering, this is most likely where you have a problem. See, you haven't settled it in your heart that it is God's will for you to prosper. John said, I, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That's what he said. I wish that you will prosper and be in health. Now, why is John wishing that? Remember, he says, if we pray according to his will, God hears us. So why will John be wishing that if it's not the will of God? Now, I read yesterday to you, he says, God wants to. He's able to make all grace and every earthly favor come to you in abundance so that you, in every circumstance and whatever the need, you will be self-sufficient so that you require no aid, you require no support. See, God wants you to be self-sufficient. He doesn't want your blessing to be dependent on another man. This thing, this thing, not, oh, I wish, I wish you will understand this. He wants you to be so independent in your life that that's how he designed it. Remember what Jesus said. Jesus said something very striking. He said, as the father has life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life in himself. Do you understand that? So the thing that makes the father exist, he has given to the son so that the son can exist by himself also. Now, what's that life he's talking about? It's the Holy Spirit. Now, now that's the mind of God. God is not the God that just always wants to use rope to tie you and hold you to himself as though he's afraid he's going to lose you. No, no, no. God has never been scared about losing you because he is God and he is complete all by himself. It is you that should be concerned about losing your place in God. Praise God. So, prosperity is simply knowing what to do in every situation and having the ability to do it. Praise God. Now I said, you must settle it in your heart. So I'll give you some scriptures. First, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. See? He has given. Didn't he say he shall give? He said he has given. Us all things. Now, what do you understand from that? It's too late to think otherwise. God doesn't only desire that you prosper. He has given you prosperity. You know, I said, so why am I still poor? Why, why, why am I not enjoying it? That's why I'm bringing these teachings to you. So, you, whatever you have heard against what I'm telling you now, it's not the truth. Anybody that have told you that, look, God wants us to suffer, you know, when we suffer in this life, then in the sweet by and by, we will enjoy. They are cheating you of God's best. That's why I call them wicked. <laughs> See, they are wicked. They are like the devil. I'm, I'm serious. Anybody that's telling you it's not God's will for you to do well, anybody that's telling you it's not God's will for you to be in health, anybody that's telling you that, oh, God has allowed this sickness in your body, there's, there's a lesson he wants you to learn. Oh, okay. Has he taught you that lesson? See, you know, sometimes, think, just think. That's why God gave you a brain. You don't just accept things people say and just swallow it down, oh, because it's a pastor that said it. You think, ask questions. If God said this, then why should this be this? That's why God gave you a brain. See? So God wants you to use your brain. Use your brain to do what? Analyze his word. Analyze his truth. Listen. Let me read 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to you. So you see what he's saying here. Now he says, look at, he says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Did you see that? Now that's the last part I want you to see. That it is God who gives us, he didn't say them, 
He said, it is God who gives us richly. What does he mean richly? Surplus. All things to enjoy. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. Think about it. He gives you all things to enjoy. And he gives it to you richly. Now, all the scripture, you can see, check first. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 21. Now he says, all things are yours. Listen, it's too late to think otherwise. That's what. So settle it in your heart. In fact, say this, say this with me. Say, Lord, I believe that you have prospered me. It is your will that I walk in prosperity and I accept it to be so in my life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. See, it's his will. Now, when you accept it in your heart, the next thing is to confess it with your mouth. Now, I'm going to talk to you about that tomorrow. Praise God, because I've got to stop here. Hear me? Doors are opening up for you to bring you into light and the truth of what I'm sharing with you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful day till tomorrow. Bye-bye.